speak to their, or the meaning of, the metaphysical meaning of Christmas to them. So I'm going to invite up our first speaker, who is Maureen Bishop. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning. Nice to see everyone. We have a lot of red out there. But it's a wonderful time for me. Michelle had asked me to talk about what it means to me, and it's a very exciting time for me. And I, I just I have to tell you this because of the playing of the piano. I have, this is a little side here. Sure. I have a demonstration a week and a half ago. Nancy and Robert were with me. Um, I, the day before, I had sort of been meditating and saying, well, Spirit, I don't need anything for Christmas. Just, you know, surprise me. <laughs> and, and like a day later, two days later, I go out to uh, breakfast with a friend. She says, Mary Ann has died. They've taken everything out of her place, and they're getting rid of everything, and the piano is sitting outside. Do you want a piano? <laughs> so I was like, what? So I went over, I played it, and it was like, wow, it was like angelic. It was like my heart got in tune with that piano, and I said yes, and I called movers, they brought it to my house, it's sitting right where a bookcase is, and it's perfect, and I played it, and I even had some old sheet music from five years before when I gave, got rid of my other piano, and it was such a great gift, thank you, Spirit. Yeah. And I told, I told Richard, the neighbor called, another neighbor called and said, did you know Mary Ann's boyfriend who gave her that piano was a music producer in London, and that piano has been played by Paul McCartney. <gasps> so thank you, Spirit. Thank you. But Christmas, yeah, Christmas is a time of miracles. Christmas, uh, Ernest Holmes said Christmas is a principle. Christ is a principle. And it's interesting that uh, it's set near the time of the solstice because Christ we look at the word Christ and it means the enlightened, someone who brings light to the world. We talk about that. In, uh, and in fact, Christ, Jesus, Yeshua ben Joseph, was not born December 25th. He was born in April. Um, and they moved his birth date to co coincide with the solstice. And I think it's perfect. You know, here's a person who became enlightened and brought more light to the world. So how perfect to have it his birthday. Last week, Michelle said, you know, mentioned that I had worked with Mother Teresa. And she used to say, that person, that person, that person, that person, you know, that's the face of Jesus. Well, I say, that person, that person, that person, that person, that's the face of Christ. We're all Christ. It's within us, and it is evolving. As we evolve, as we open up to love, as we open up to joy and peace and power and beauty, and we make those choices in life, it flows through us. And we are the Christ. We are becoming more of the Christ. So um, I think that life can be just a mundane physical experience, but you're here because you are awakening and you know who and what you are. Now, Ernest Holmes said, he said, the purpose of your life is to manifest true nature, the Christ. That's what he called the true nature. He also called it the truth of who and what you are. So, all I can say today in closing is, well, we have an amazing time of year here. Let's enjoy it and celebrate all of our spiritual birthdays. So Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday. When we were planning this program, 
and I was thinking about what I was going to talk about, I got to think about the story of the Magi and how what was going on in that story actually parallels what goes on in our own lives. In the Bible, it says, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod, there came Magi. One of the interesting things is it doesn't say three. It just says Magi in the Bible. And that the Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. Now, I think east is symbolic in this story. Because what happens in the east? That's where the sun rises. That's where life happens. That's where we awake up or we have an awakening that happens. So and not the west where the sun's going down and everything is dying. These were the learned men of the ages. They were the wise teachers. Those who had studied for years had studied the prophets and all the books. And this is what was coming, what was presenting itself. So the Magi asked Herod, we're looking for the king of Jews. Where was he born? And they came because they had seen a star in the sky. Well, this is something that was new to them, that they didn't know about, that they wanted to find out about. So they went on a journey to find out. Now, anytime anything new bursts in our own lives, we go on a journey, especially if it interests us because we want to know about it. We want to have an understanding about it. So we ourselves begin a new journey any time that happens. Now, Spirit supports us in anything that we go after in our lives. So when we start to take a journey and have something new going we usually realize that we are going to need some wise teachers in our lives. And these are representative of the Magi. We, by right of consciousness, then attract different teachers that help us on our journey of what it is we're trying to accomplish. However, when Herod heard that there was going to be a king of the Jews, and he was a big lucky muck at the time, well, it says he trembled. Well, he was going to lose his job if this became true, right? So he needed to find out whether it was going to be true or not. And not only did Herod tremble, it says all of Jerusalem was in fear. What happens to us in our lives when something new is thrust upon us? Do we handle change well? Or do we come discombobulated sometimes? And have fear happen to us? So, one of the examples is the new computer operating system that we're now looking at. Those of you who don't have Windows 10, you're going to have to have this system by sometime in January because there's not going to be any support that's going to happen with your own Windows 7 or 8 or whatever the number is. It could get hacked. You're you know, not going to be able to have questions answered. So what's going to happen here? Well, number one is you're going to have to look at some money to buy a new operating system. So 
So you're going to deal with prosperity in your life. Number two, you're going to have to have somebody who knows how to install that system if you don't already have that knowledge. And number three, you're going to have to master a new Windows 10 program. Change was going to happen in Jerusalem with this new king. So, based on the way we handle change, how things are going, we may be a little afraid of it also. So, the Magi then went on, found Jesus, and gave him the three gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These were not inexpensive gifts. They were gifts of value. And these are the things that we need to be grateful for from the wise teachers that we have in our lives. Because not only are they giving us things to use now, but information we can use our whole lifetime in this process. The Magi then had a dream. Now, a dream is one of the intuitive ways that God or the power speaks to us. And having all the teaching that they had, they listened to this and they followed it. Something happens to us and it says, this is wrong information or you shouldn't be taking that particular direction. Spirit lets us know. What the key here is, is that they listened and they followed. When this happens to us, do we listen and do we follow? Do we know that God is always right will guide us and give us the wisdom that we need in that particular instant. So this, then the Magi went a different way. They took, they were told in the dream, do not go back to Herod. Herod really does not want to worship this newborn. Go a different route. And so when we listen, that happens to us, we're given up wrong information. Do we take the same path usually? If we're listening, no. We follow that new path. So this story is one that's actually all about us and the things that happen in our life. And the wisdom that we glean from this story is one that we can use in so many instances. So the thing is, is make your journey a happy and prosperous one. Celebrate and have joy in doing it. Mm. I just took my talk. I'll keep my talk. know with all my notes, but they might help. <laughs> Thank you. I, I like what the uh, great philosopher James Taylor said about the Magi. Mm -hmm. Those magic men, the Magi, some people called them wise, oriental, even kings. Well, anyway, those guys, they visited with Jesus. They sure enjoyed their stay. Then warned in a dream of King Herod's scheme, they went home by another reminded us today is um, we're coming up on on Wednesday Christmas which is the Christian celebration of the birth of Jesus Jesus the Christ and um, unless you have lived under a rock for most of your life or have never seen a Charlie Gra Brown Christmas special you probably know the story and the story is simply that 
uh, Joseph, Mary was betrothed to Joseph, and Mary, as a virgin, found herself pregnant. And Joseph, while surprised, married her anyway. And so um, when she was almost full term, she had, they had to participate in a census. And so they had to travel to Bethlehem. And I, I can still in my head see the, the vision of Mary being heavy with child, sitting on the donkey and then making their way to Bethlehem. And they get to Bethlehem and there is no room for them in the inn, in the inn. And so they find a place at the edge of town stable where they're safe and warm and Mary gives birth to Jesus the Christ. So there's all of these different pieces in the story which uh, Maureen and, and Leslie both pointed out for us. There's the guiding star, there's the shepherds, there's the angels, there's the wise men, the magi who come on all of these play into the story. Now, ancient storytellers, well, actually storytellers through all ages, used to begin their stories with things like, well, there was and yet there was not, or, I don't know if it really happened this way, but I know that it's true. As an invitation for us to look at these stories, this Christmas story, any of the many stories that we read in the Bible or ancient myths, Aesop's fables, all of these stories that embedded within them is a timeless and a changeless truth. While the facts make the story interesting and the narrative, and we can remember it underneath the story itself, the objective facts, is the real learning, is the real truth and principle that the narrator or the storyteller wants us to embody. And the Christmas story, like all the myths and legends that we hear, are stories that are alive. And they become alive for us to the degree that we can embody this timeless truth, these changeless principles that relate to our own lives. And what good is a story unless in some way we can embody it, make it ours, and make it real for us? Have it come alive in a, in a new way. So no matter what you, what your social, cultural, religious beliefs are, this Christmas story is alive for us. It's our journey. The journey of Joseph and Mary to, to Bethlehem is our journey. The star, the angels, the wise men, their participation is our participation. They have meaning and, and depth and they bring up the story alive for us. So this is why I needed my notes. So I can remember where I am. Oh, so. The story of the Christmas story, the story of the birth of Jesus, is the story of the yearning of our soul, the yearning of who we are to be in touch with its divinity to, and to express itself through our humanity. It's the story of um, the wisdom of Joseph and the heart and the love of Mary coming together to create a space where the birth of the Christ consciousness can reveal itself through our humanity. Now, Ernest Holmes told us that the Christ consciousness, as uh, Maureen said, is a principle. It's not, uh, Christ was not Jesus' last name. Christ was the principle of the divine incarnate within man. And so when we talk about the Christ consciousness, we're talking about this pairing of the divine in and through it as our humanness, expressed as our humanity, that we are God incarnate in form. And the Christmas story brings that alive for us. So here's what the Christmas story means to me personally, is that I, I think of um, Joseph as being a representation, the idea of mind. We talk about mind and science of mind a lot. Mind is, is intellect, logic, order, wisdom. And the idea of Mary as a representation of heart, of peace and compassion and deep love. And they travel together to Bethlehem. Bethlehem literally means house of bread, house of 
the living, house of sustenance. So we travel together to this place, bringing heart and mind together in a place where it is the perfect environment, the perfect place for the enjoying of heart and mind, to be born in the Christ consciousness, which is within each and every one of us. So for me, that's the meaning of the story, that we are on a journey to Bethlehem. We are constantly in this repetitive cycle of birth and expression and rebirth and recreation. And the story brings it alive for us, that it is incumbent upon us as we travel through this life to recognize that we are all of these aspects. We are divine wisdom and divine love, and we are an expression, a walking and a living embodiment of the divine here on earth. And I love that it brings a, a completely different meaning to the, the story of the birth of the Christ consciousness in man. And this is going on through all times, in, in all people, in all ages. And this time of year, when the sun is beginning to make its journey back to the fullness of light, we marry these two aspects of the divine, of mind and love, to bring the fullness of who we are into our own lives, into beingness. Ernest Holmes told us that we are the only begotten sons and daughters of God. We are it. We are the light of the world. We are the embodiment of all that is inherent within our source. And we have the opportunity to recognize that we can live the Christ consciousness in everything we do. So my takeaways from the story. It is our decision. It is our choice whether or not we want to be dedicated to the journey to Bethlehem on a daily basis, to practice spiritual practices that put us in the environment where we can marry these two things, mind, love and law, Holmes called it, mind and heart, wisdom and love, where we blend these two aspects of the divine. They are part of the creative process and we live that in our humanness, in everything that we do. To recognize that the birth of the Christ consciousness within us is always taking place. Every time we experience or express love in our lives, we are birthing the Christ consciousness. And, and the last thing that I take away from it is that we live this Christ consciousness in everything we do in the way that we engage with each other, in the way that we show up in the world, in the way that we treat ourselves, that this is a practical, usable principle that works in our daily lives and draws us to a new and grander experience of the inherent divine nature that is always within us. That in every moment, in every fresh new day, we wake up to, to birth the Christ consciousness. That's, that's our journey. And every day is a journey to Bethlehem. Every day we connect with that sustenance. And even when the outside world tells us there's no room at the end, we know that there is. We know that there's a place within us that is always a light with the safety, the nurturing, the wisdom, and the love, and the peace, and the compassion of God. And here's where we go. So this is just yet another beautiful story from a religious experience, a religious tradition, that tells us that the, that the flame is always burning, just like Hanukkah, that the, the light is being reborn, just like the sol solstice, and that we truly are the embodiment of the light of God, right here, right now. We're the birth of the Christ consciousness. Ugh. So, I hope, I know, I know that in the depth of your being right now, there is a light, and that it is becoming brighter and brighter and deeper and deeper, and it is expressing the inherent goodness, the inherent love, and the inherent nature of God, which is infinite and constant and loving 
in every aspect of your life. Because we belong to the family of life. We are both common and unique. And we are the light of the world. Let's pray. Oh, so I just take a deep breath in, knowing that all is well. Every aspect of our lives is an expression of the divine, where God is truly all that exists. It is in and through and as its creation, and we are its creation. And we sit in the light. We are the light. We express the light. So joyously, I claim and accept for each and every person that is present here in this room, and each and every person that is not, that there is a shift, that there is an awakening, that there is a rebirth, a renewal, a coming out of this all that is in every aspect, in every area, in every action, every thought, every feeling, for thought is the action of mind, and feeling is the action of heart. And they come together in this shift in consciousness within each and every one of us to birth the Christ consciousness, which is the love, the divinity, the action of God in every area of our lives. So for this, I simply say thank you. And moving into that place of gratitude that is generative and expansion, expansive and raises up into the vibration of, of the loving presence and power of God itself, I simply say thank you. I release this prayer into the capable hands of law. I let it be. Simply let God do God's work, and together we signify our agreement by faith. And so it is.